In December 1869, in the small town of Mills, Michigan, two brothers were born named Horace and John, and their last name is Doge. It happened that these two brothers grew up in mechanical and technical things. The father of these two brothers was Daniel Dodge, who worked despite the hardships and the income he didn't have. He gave all the work to his two sons and two technical brothers. Another task he gave to these two boys was to be loyal to each other and not disrespect each other so that you will be successful. This training of Daniel Dodge made these two brothers get along well. The fact that John was four years older than Horace supports it, and the little sister supports her older brother, but the father's business was not prosperous. In this situation in Michigan, no one could be successful unless he was an apothecary, otherwise he would have been doomed. Daniel Dodge would have been lost as well. Looking for another job at that time, there was a law that children should not be hired, so both Daniel and his two sons got a job in an industrial house called Upton Manufacturing, whose main production was steam engines. They don't have, and they have a special interest in these technical works. That's why they follow the technical prodigies of their father's upbringing, which made them also interested in the fact that they learn something. They are busy with work, and when the elder brother turns 21 years old, he comes back and his dad and father say that there is no point in working here because this place is a bombshell. He quits this job and goes to the most advanced industrial city in the world at that time. Detroit, where a basic industrial system was formed. John, because it was Belt's job, he got a lot of work in another steam engine house, and he also got a salary of $16 a week. His little brother stayed with his father, but he told his father that I should go to his father's side. He also agrees and says, go, I will go to work in the house of his brother Horace, and he also borrows his little brother's salary, but with a salary of $13 a week. Why, because he is under 18 years old, everything is fine. It would have progressed on its own, but misfortune caused John to become infected with one of the patients of that time, namely tuberculosis. At that time, those who were suffering from tuberculosis were so disappointed because it kills most patients but John did not despair and went to the doctor and said that maybe a the doctor also has a medicine for me to get well. And he said that it might help you, uh, a medicine called Elixir 130, which was originally a syrup that had 42% alcohol. John also drinks this syrup for several months and finally he can control the tuberculosis in his body. He comes out of the hole and falls into the well. He found that his tuberculosis was free, but he had become an alcoholic. Looking for a better job, his income could be higher. In this goal, he met a man named Henry Leland, who later became the founder of the Cadillac factory. At this time, Henry M. Leland has an industrial workshop and buys various parts for his safari, but he is a perfect person. It means that whatever work is supposed to be done, you must know that it will be flawed. Leland, when Horace met his brother a few days later, he was very pleased with these two brothers and realized that they both know how to work and are technical. But he couldn't trust John. His lungs were damaged and he had to work somewhere. The air should be clean. That was the main problem, not that he wouldn't trust him because he was an alcoholic. When Horace saw that he couldn't trust his brother, he didn't want to trust him either to work, and when John and John went to the border of Canada, he worked in a factory that made typewriters. The introduction of typewriters was also a step forward in technology. Horace and John worked well in the factory, but they were unemployed in their spare time. They don't stay and try to make or invent the same things. That's when Horace invents a kind of burbrink for his own bicycle, a burbrink that is made of a net that is smoother and dirt doesn't get inside. When John sees his brother's invention, he says, what did you build? And he says, well done. And he says, we can provide the same advice. We need to register a company. 
There was a person living in Detroit named Frederick Evans. He was very involved in the registration of the company. Laws like this, that's why the Dodge brothers partnered with this gentleman. An industrial company, Evans and Doug Bicycle Company, started making burrings for different things. Burrings, each of which was a revolution. That's why this company started very soon. Evans, who was involved in marketing and companies, used to advertise in the whole of America. The two brothers told Evans that we will continue our partnership with you, but we have to go somewhere else. And where does the brothers want to go? These two brothers decided to start their work again from the beginning, that is, from lathe work, and their father also did this. They told Evans that we want to sell our shares in the company. He also said, I will buy. Of course, $7,500 was a lot of money in 1897, so it was enough for the two of them to start a new factory, a company called Dodge Brother, whose main work starts from lathe work. When Hervis and John Dodge Brother Company, they didn't know how to start their company. They wanted to change the world. These two brothers were so technical that every device entered their factory, and if there was a problem, they could easily find the fault and fix it. This made them very famous in Detroit. Listen to Detroit, which is full of work at home, knows everything about these two brothers, and says that they are busy with any technical work like this, from a normal typewriter to a big bike to a locomotive engine. Until he meets a person named Ransom Eliolds, the man who owns a car manufacturing company called Olds Motor Works, which later became Olds Mobiles, says to the Dodge brothers, I want a car from you. This man is Olds, who registered the car in his own name in 1901. What is it? Does he want the cat from these two brothers? He said, I wanted a gearbox motor from you. You should make a gearbox motor for me to put on my new Olds car called Model R. The Dodge brothers were very happy. They said, oh, John, we were stuck with a simple task. From the very morning, we started making the things that he wanted to produce high-quality engine and transmission in the Olds factory. In the first year, he produced 2,500 Olds of the Model R type. He put it with the engines and gearboxes of the Dodge brothers. Not only did he make the brothers rich, but they became famous in the whole of America, that is, everyone. Realizing that these two brothers can make the best motorcycle gearboxes, these two brothers use the same thing that their father had taught them to use, and they also have different air and work by their side. They drive and like it to work at night when their Dodge brothers become famous and make Olds motor gearboxes at the same time when another genius is building his empire in the same Detroit, Henry Ford, the one who started the Ford Motor Company. And the two pieces of the puzzle of this housework are still incomplete engine and gearbox production. Ford will understand very soon that the best manufacturers of gearboxes, the Dodge brothers, are coming for this. Two brothers are also spoken to. Many people like it, and they also liked Ford. Ford comes back and says with two brothers, we can change the automobile world with you. Our goal is much higher than Olds Mobile's words. Gord himself knew what he wanted to do. He knew that if a car was produced that every normal person would buy, Ford had not yet produced a single car until the time that Mazakrad was done. Even though Oldis had daily production, despite these two brothers, they liked Ford so much that they signed an Olds contract. He didn't sign at the beginning of the year, and coming to join Ford's work means making a big mistake in the work of a house that has started and is profitable. It is a factory that hasn't started yet, but they saw so much in the four Fords that this can change the world. It's not a good change. That's why we have to work with it. Ford Costly came to the contract early and said to build a Shasti car for me with the axles and beams under it and the engines and gearbox on it. Ford was new to agreeing together and it could not pay all the products that Dodge made and gave to them in time. So it was always in debt to these two brothers. If you want to do this with us, there are other companies than us. Let's give them a box engine, of course. They are not serious, because they are not willing to pay Ford. At that time, they owed $7,000 from Ford, so a new idea came to them. They went to Ford and said, You owe us $7,000, 
and you owe us $3,000. We offer you that it is possible to pay $10,000 for you and 10% of the Ford company. Ford will be very upset, but nevertheless, he had to accept that 10% of the Ford factory belonged to these brothers. Both their own growth and the growth of Ford multiplied. The Dodge brothers became the owners of 10% of the Ford company, but they also sell parts to this company. When the Ford Model T was ready for production, most of its parts were made by the Dodge brothers. That is, if you were trying to install the whole car, you would have reached these two for getting so much money. At the same time, the words that Ford and the Dodge brothers made 11 years ago became a reality. To return a zero-kilometer company like Ford to a successful company. As we said, it was Renson Olds who registered the production line, but he could not implement the production line. The person who implemented the production line was Henry Ford. Henry Ford caused it happened that the production line made its way to all the factories in the world. Henry Ford had implemented such a production line that a Ford Model T would take 90 minutes from the beginning of the line until it was completed. It didn't take long that in 1914, Ford became the largest car manufacturer in the world, the company that gave 10% of the dinner to two brothers in 1914. If you looked at all the cars in the world, nine out of 10 cars were Ford Model T Ford had grown, but the factory itself had also grown a lot. Before he agreed with Henry Ford to close it, they only had 120 workers, but at this time they had 5,000 workers. Going back a step higher, the Dodge brothers used to talk to each other and said that it is true that we are a partner in Ford, but we should have our own factory, so that if the Ford factory ever contacts us, we will not buy the land. The device inside them was lit. On July 1st, 1914, Dodge Brother Motor Company was registered and started to work on the code of his first self-design and began to produce Dodge Model 30, a car that was powerful for that time and cooler than Ford Model T in all respects. Before this company, Dodge produced quality parts. That's why it was known in America that it makes high quality things. This good month made it sell 45,000 cars in the first month of the year and become the top three car manufacturers in America. The first being Ford, the second being Valise, which later became Dodge Brothers Jeep, as always. Another big feat they did was to make the world's first successful van, and next to it, the first self-driving van, what they call a panel van. Dodge has been growing alongside Ford for 10 years, but still 10% of the Ford company belongs to them. Ford is paying monthly to his main competitor. At this time, Ford is thinking about how to spend his money. He goes to the back of his account and says, I want money. What's the matter? I'll return all of our profits. You work at home and pay it back. It equalizes, and in the absence of it, it increases the production drastically so that the price of its cars comes down a lot and Ford becomes the cheapest car in America. 10% of the profit of the Dodge brothers also came to pay. That's why they were very upset, saying, Wow, why did they make the factory like this, going to complain to Gord after three years of court and murder? The court condemned Ford. Ford was convicted. Two million dollars should be paid to the Dodge brothers. Henry Ford was very angry. He gave two million dollars to them and told them that you have to sell me 10% of the shares. At that time, Ford's percentage had reached 25 million dollars, but Henry Ford said, I am ready for 25 million dollars. I will pay the dollar and I will not work with these two brothers anymore. Two brothers took good money, 25 million, and left. If you see the history of the partnership of Dodge Brothers and Ford B, you can see that they entered Ford with $10,000, and in the end, they took $32 million from Ford. This was in addition to the promotions they took. It won't be long before America enters the First World War. Which company makes the highest quality car in America and to understand that Dodge makes it, it is true that Fodair had the best production, but Dodge cars were more expensive. But with much better quality, Dodge contracted with the US Army, and this company became the first car maker in the world, which makes military cars. No company has made military cars before this. This caused Dodge to come behind Ford and become the second producer of war vehicles for Jihad. Nothing in this world lasts forever. And again, like a fountain, time reaches its peak, 
it must flow downwards. The First World War has just ended, and it is the second day since 1920. They went to New York, everything went well, and they returned to Detroit, but they were unaware of the fact that they were infected with the Spanish flu virus, the virus that is killing them, these two brothers, because they were always together, their spouses got sick together, a disease that is very unlikely. He was improving, very soon the lungs of both of his dads got infected and turned into pleurisy or pneumonia. This disease kills you in 10 days, and he died at the age of 55. Horace, who was four years younger than his dad, could. He beat the Spanish flu and recovered, but he became the most depressed man in America, and all his sadness was because he had lost his brother. I see that he didn't like it, but surprisingly, he was running the factory, but he was able to continue for a few months. He was severely depressed, and the damage to his lungs caused him to be unable to work anymore. Horace also dies. After the death of the Dodge brothers, their families became the owners of the company. They were the number three man of Dodge, namely Frederick J. Haynes, who was trusted by the two brothers. He was appointed to the management of the factory. Joaquin continued the same path. Day by day, the company became more successful. It didn't take long until in 1925, a wealthy private banker contacted Braden Dodge's family and said, I will buy the entire company for 146 million. They fired Frederick and put an unknown creditor in this company so that the next year the value of the company was $146 million and became $100 million. Whoever gives me the factory and its equipment, I will give him the factory and its equipment. It was here that an American capitalist named Walter P. Chrysler, who was like a pawn, went and wrote a check for $170 million to the banker. The first thing Chrysler did was the name Dodge Baradar, converted to Dodge and produced the company's own silent board, cheap wheels that can compete with Ford and Schulet, even though Dodge and Chrysler are still under the same roof and the company is continuing its work. Dodge R 